Meanwhile, back at the fight. Two black figures clash against one another. One is Ryder, running at great speed, striking at her enemy from all possible directions. Her long hair blown behind her. She looks like a beautiful shooting star. But a shooting star is a small star after all. The swordsman who Ryder faces. Ryder cannot break through Saber's guard as she firmly fixes herself on the ground and overwhelms Ryder. No matter how quickly Ryder leaps to attack her blind spot, Saber deflects the daggers with a single swing of her blade, striking Ryder in the same motion. Her uh, severe firmness reminds me of a black sun. A large star that will consume you once you draw near. No matter how fast Ryder may move, an ephemeral shooting star can never match the light of one that burns in place. Her sneak attack is repelled yet again, and she's wounded. She can retreat a Saber counterattack because of her superhuman speed. Ryder closes in and withdraws in an instant, just like a black spark. But her efforts merely prevent a fatal blow. The difference in their powers is obvious. Ryder's speed decreases the more she attacks. High speed movement and, count and continuous offense. Natural healing that regenerates the wounds Saber sustains. She's not thinking about anything that comes after. She can't match Saber unless she uses all of her energy. Ryder's blocking Saber's attacks by attacking. Once Saber shifts to offense, she and her master will be killed instantly. Therefore, Ryder keeps running, knowing she'll eventually burn out. Her energy's lost with every passing second. Ryder said she could last two minutes. It's been ten minutes since passing that limit. Ryder's legs are starting to give in to the strain. In contrast, Saber is unscathed. Ryder's attacks have not reached her, and she shows no fatigue. Technique, vitality, magical energy, Saber overwhelms Ryder in these three aspects. Therefore, once Ryder loses her speed, her sole advantage, Saber will shift to offense. Ryder's speed is declining. It's only a matter of time before Saber catches up to Ryder's speed. A few more seconds, Ryder will be out of breath once her next attack is blocked. The instant Ryder loses her strength and magical energy, Saber will slice her body in half. But this has been predicted. Before they came to the cavern, the boy told Ryder of his prediction of this exact outcome. She knows she'll lose if she fights like this. There's only one way to change the outcome of death. They hold their breath and wait for the moment. Ryder attacks Saber. At the same instant, I loosen the restraint on my left arm. And start the projection. I'm disappearing, loosening the shroud on Archer's arm. Search. I'm blown away. The wind's strong. I'm losing my comprehension of what's before me. Let go of the right hand. Put the shroud back on. I can't bear it for even a second. I'll lose everything. I'll lose what I value. Search. Select. No, every part of my body's dying at this moment. Ryder's fighting desperately. I can't whine about this. I have to do what I can and fight. I can't lose my concentration for even a second. Ryder's going to time it. I have to free my left arm so I can match her timing. Select, analyze. But it hurts. It's painful and scary. Quick, quick is right. It disappears. Something I value disappears. I can't remember what I lost, but what I kept in my heart cannot be recalled ever again. Bullshit. Defer, 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 defer. Slash. My right lung is torn from within. Not yet. I can't stay conscious. Ryder's also desperate. I won't lose. I give all I have to keep watching Ryder. Ryder's fighting her fight. I'll fight my own fight. Ryder stops. Ryder must have exhausted her reserves of energy because she's on her knees in front of Saber. Saber's sword moves. Ryder's going to be killed. I... I have to wait for my chance. I trust her. I have to trust her and wait. What good will it do even if I attack Saber now? 
What can I do with my projection that's already prepared? Our plan's already been determined. Ryder accepted my strategy, temporarily acknowledging me as her master. So... Saber's sword cuts through empty space. Ryder has already retreated out of Saber's range, and it's the greatest retreat possible. She jumps back to the edge of the cavern. Saber can't pursue her. Ryder's chain is tangled around her legs. That's why Ryder went on her knees. Ryder, persis Ryder persistently attacked Saber's upper body, entangled her legs as the final attack, and nailed her in place by piercing the nail dagger on the ground. You cannot stop me with such a thing. Magical energy courses through Saber's body. Saber takes on lightning and easily destroys the chain. But it's too late. The small opening lasts a mere two seconds, but that that's more than Ryder needs. Noble Phantasm. 50 meters. Seeing the sudden gap between them, Saber instantly realizes Ryder's intention. Then there's only one way to oppose it. A strong a strongest attack for a strongest attack. Holy shit, that could have been written better. Black light flows out. A scorching wind bursts forth from Saber's sword. A comet will come will will attack her in the next second. The strongest noble phantasm is employed to wipe out the pure light from Ryder. Ryder lowers her stance. The summoning circle's already completed. A giant eye, bound by blood, materializes in front of her. Come, Ryder. The sword ready beside her. Converging and spinning, the light of the star reaches the critical point. The black sun stands ready, the flare held in both hands. Its true name is Cast. Ryder's figure is instantly covered in white. The true name is revealed. Saber's sword transforms into a blazing black flame. The two lights in the cavern contend for supremacy. At that instant, I stop time. I accelerate all my processes. Dis Disguising this intent, uh, instant as eternity. Search, select, analyze, project. That's my role. The second projection. Magic that shaves my existence away. But we can't beat Saber without it. We can't match Saber's noble phantasm even with Bellafrone. We knew that already. So I'm going to make her win. If Ryder's noble phantasm is inferior in force, I'll make up for the difference. I am the ball of my soul. I already know what I have to use. The projection's completed in an instant. The greatest projection Archer knows, the noble phantasm that will lead Ryder to victory. No. Ah, yes. That would be the giant shield that Archer used against fucking, uh, Lancer, if you don't remember, from Unlimited Blade Works. I make it into reality using its true name. A shudder runs through my outstretched arm. Nerves, muscles, and blood dance around like mad. I frantically hold my convulsing left arm with my right. Bear it. I can't stop the projection. The lights are still competing. If Ryder loses Ayus now, she'll be vaporized in an instant. My left arm jumps about while my shoulder fires bullets into my body. The magical energy I can't control explodes inside my body, and just like an eraser, turns Emiya Shiro's body white. I roar out. I scream to ward off the pain and fear of losing myself. Pretty lights. Bare magical energy is smashed. It completely destroys the balance between the two. It's 
Scattering the fourth petal, the black ultimate light penetrated through. It fills the cavern with bright white light. The two servants are blown away. Ryder smashes against the wall at the exact speed at which she charged. Saber is hurled backward by Bellofron and falls to the ground on her back. They're both alive. Ryder must have used up her magical energy as she's still on the ground. But Saber, she's deeply wounded. But she still has some power left. <laughs> we barely had the edge in the confrontation of the noble phantasms. Bellofron had 90% of its light offset by Saber's holy sword. I run. I run without understanding what I have to do. I release the Azoth sword while I run. Save. I run to her. I run to her and straddle her defenseless body. Oh my. Did she hit her head? Saber's looking up at me absentmindedly. How must I look to her? I'm on top of her, looking down with a dagger upraised. Saber's natural healing power is extraordinarily. She'll regenerate unless I finish her off right now. Finish her here. We'll be killed unless I kill Saber, who's wounded and unable to fight back. My fragmented mind is strangely clear right now. She must be conscious again. Saber is staring at me with cold eyes. I... This is a stupid choice. Anyone who picked one is a fucking idiot. Bring my arm down. There's no hesitation. Holding her gaze, I bring down my heavy arm. How did he put the cloth back on? That's my only question. He clearly has it on. There's no resistance. I end Saber's life with one blow. Okay, I get this is supposed to be sad, but she's already died before we had that moment. Why are we having it again? She also tried to murder us this time. There were memories. There was the warmth of life. Her warmth was always by my side. I kill her along with those memories. I search through my mind and throw them away to where I can't find them again. They'll never return. I'll never recall her now. Such a thing will never be forgiven. I chose this path. I killed someone else to save Sakura. Bro, she fucking tried to murder you, too. This is like some contrived fucking story bullshit to make this make sense. Using my own hands, I killed someone who protected me until the very end. She fucking tried to murder you! Neither regret nor a confession will bring forgiveness. This is what it means to ally with someone. I'll keep sacrificing important things for the one I love. And on top of, and on this path, there's nothing brilliant enough to make up for what I've lost. But Saber, I'll search all my life for happiness that can measure up to what I've lost. I'll keep losing more than I gain, and I know I'll stop someday. But I'm going to take responsibility for stealing things away, even if I'm pathetic, comical, or meaningless. I don't know where I can find happiness, but I swear to myself that I'll never give up, even if I can't see the end. Thanks. You saved me many times. This sounds like the scrapped ending to an in to an entirely like different route. Which honestly, given what I've read about this, could 100% be true. The weight on my dagger disappears. Silent to the end, the dark swordsman sinks into the black shadow, her eyes fixed on me. All right, give me a hot second. I am going to go get some water now because I am incredibly thirsty. Okay, and we're back now. So, the black wave closes in, spreading its arms to block its prey's escape. It attacks as the tidal surge. Yeah, whatever the fuck that just said. But that golden flash of light forbids the giant's existence. Six already. Ren has cut down the endless barrage of dark curses. The surprised one is Mount Osakura, the master of the shadows. It's a natural reaction. Each of the black giants is a match for the noble phantasms wielded by servants. 
For Tusco Ren, even one giant should be an avatar of inescapable death. But she has struck down six already. She killed every one of them with a single blow. And running up the cliff now, she eliminates the seventh one with, uh, the seventh with one stroke of her dagger. No way. You're too persistent. The gym sword blazes with light. The colorless blade emits seven prismatic colors, extraordinary power surging from its core. There we go, pull that out a little bit. It bathes the cavern in bright golden light. Destroying the last of the shadows in her way, Tosco Rin reaches the top of the cliff. Mount Osakura stands before her. The black girl stares with surprise at her older sister's arrival. No way. It's not possible. At the sound of her voice, numerous shadows rise up. Their number is incomparable to before. It is, Sakura's impa is it Sakura's impatience, or did the things behind her sense the risk to their master? The magical energy emitted against the mere human called Tosco Rin is over a hundred million in numerical value. You're not holding back. The people of the association would faint if they were here. They could keep a department running for a hundred years with that much magical energy. And what are you cutting them down? I'm pulling out magical energy thousands of times your capacity. You don't have enough strength to even kill one of my shadows, so why? We're just having a pure contest of power. I can't dispel a curse. I'm merely using my magical energy to eliminate your magical energy that's creating the shadow. Can't you tell? I'm saying that's impossible. You don't have such magical energy. No, the light you're firing is like... The greatest servant, the light of Saber's noble phantasm Excalibur, which still doesn't make any fucking sense. Because Excalibur's been beaten half a billion times. Is it that sword? I don't think it's possible, but that's copying the power of Saber's noble phantasm. Is it a limited weapon activated with your small magical energy that's specialized in killing shadows? Huh? You can't tell? What have they been teaching you, Sakura? D don't mock me! That's the only sound explanation! See, it's shit like this that makes Sakura just really fail as a villain. There's nothing to explain. This isn't a copy of Saber's Noble Phantasm, nor a shadow-killing demonic sword. Sakura, this is Zeltrix, a gem sword passed down the Tosca family. Excuse me, Zelrich? Whatever. I can't believe this, you don't even know the name Zelrich? I don't even want to explain, but in short, it's your natural enemy. You use souls as a perpetual motion machine to create magical energy. You're just a poor imitation of the third sorcery. And I use an imitation of my great master who travels across infinite parallel worlds. So it means I'm a copycat of the second sorcery. Remember when I said Nasi likes to overcomplicate shit? Hi, you just found a screenshot of it. A flash from the blade. Light traces the dagger swirling uh, swing, obliterating Malto Sakura's guardian shadows. Not only that, light and heat like those of miniature Excalibur send rumbles through the cavern. It's a pure contest of magical energy. What kind of magic? No, sorcery was used. Tosca Ren has a stock of magical energy equal to that of Mount Sakura. I don't even need to get close to you. This is actually a projectile weapon and you're hiding yourself in the shadows. There's no problem with exchanging blows until one of us runs out of power. Well, I guess the ceiling will give out before we do. No way. Exchange blows? Don't joke around. 
You don't have any magical energy left. No matter what that sword is, you can't attack anymore. Really? Then let's try. Come on, Sakura. You won't reach me no matter what you do. It's a drastic treatment, but consider it a fee for your lesson. I'll make sure you regret doing whatever you wanted just because you got a bit stronger. Honestly, in hindsight, with that phrasing, it it does kind of sound like Rin is... Like, Rin's obviously talking down to her, like, no joke in that. But it does kind of sound like that thing. If you've ever seen Fate Zero, um... What is it? Uh, Kaneth, the uh, mage who has a Lancer as his master, or as his servant. His constant talking down to of, like non-pure blood high society mages that kind of stuff it's like oh well you thought you could just become a little stronger <laughs> you silly bitch you can't do that no one is born you can't just get stronger that's stupid that's exactly how she sounds like she's talking like that's not what she means technically but that is definitely how she is demonstrating it or not demonstrating it but uh <coughs> how she is uh, wording it in a sense. <coughs> Excuse me. Not yet. Huh. <sighs> Those are words. I wonder if that actually means anything, by the way. If anyone knows, I think that's German she's speaking. I can't tell. Someone let me know. Mauta Sakura cannot understand what's happening. Now she summons the shadows out of fear. But the Sword of Light mercilessly eliminates them. Mauta Sakura is frightened and confused. I right, welcome to any person getting into fate. That's why she doesn't notice. The sweat on Tuska Rin's forehead. The high cost of using the gym sword, which shreds the muscles in her arms with each swing. I won't lose when it comes to stock, but the question is how long my body will last. Light purges the attacking shadows, but their powers are not equal. Tosca Ren and Mato Sakura, the difference in their power is still the same. Mato Sakura's stock of magical energy reaches a trillion. As it cannot be used within a lifetime, it can be called an infinite supply. Why? I'm stronger than anyone! Nobody can scald me! So how can you catch up to me like it's nothing? Someone at your level can't do anything but get swallowed! That's where you got it wrong. Even if you have a large supply, it's the caster that uses it. Do you get it? No matter how much water you have, the amount that comes out depends on the size of the faucet. The magic circuit called Mato Sakura can only instantaneously release about a thousand. Then we both have the same release rate, no matter how much you ha may have in your stock. Again, overcomplicating bullshit. I mean, actually, out of out of the overcomplicating bullshit, that was the one that made the most amount of sense, but still. Just overcomplicated bullshit. So, I don't need to repair a supply as large as yours. I merely need a thousand magical energy each time. Such a large supply of magical energy is just a waste. The line of light is swung. If a thousand light is smashed against a thousand shadow, the powers will certainly cancel each other. But Tosco Rin's magical energy doesn't even reach a hundred. The contradiction. It doesn't need to be said that her sword creates the competition that should not be possible. A sword of light that releases a thousand units of magical energy with each attack and replenishes even more. It's not using Tosco Rin's magical energy. She's merely collecting the mana, saturating this cavern, and releasing it through the gem sword. Odo is the energy within Omegas, while mana is energy within the air. Well, at least they gave me an explanation I didn't have to explain it. It's self-evident which is stronger. As Ren is inferior to Sakura, the only thing she can rely on is the mana in the air. True, the mana in this cavern reaches a thousand. It would only be once, but with the mana's help, she would be able to eliminate a giant. But there would be nothing left after that. Air holds a finite amount of power. Just as with humans, when the mana runs out, it takes a long time to be replenished. 
Tosca Rin can only oppose Malto Sakura once in this world. But, that being the case, consider for a moment. What if another cavern existed here? That would mean she could oppose her enemy one more time. And what happens if something can make that if into reality? Parallel worlds. What will happen if one can open a hole into a parallel world and pull out the unused mana from the cavern there? Because just saying it has ridiculous magical power would be too easy, I guess. That distortion's the same as the Holy Grail. Nissan, it can't be. Yep, you're not the only one pulling magical energy from elsewhere. But don't get me wrong, mine's not something that's needlessly ex expanded like yours. I'm merely using the mana in this cavern from parallel worlds. I'm taking a thousand magical energy from one of the infinite parallel worlds and attacking you with brute force. Kinda defeats the purpose of the fucking explanation prior to this when she just explained what it was in less words. The girl drawing a massive supply from the Great Holy Grail grasps. Gasps. No way. That's ridiculous. Do you get it? If you have an ex inexhaustible supply, I have a limitless, su limitless supply. Gem Sword Zelrich. It's a miracle that makes a path in between infinite parallel worlds. That's the sword's only ability, an equipment that creates a small opening too, uh, too small for humans to pass and looks into another possible world. The dagger has no function to amplify magical energy, nor does it have the power to create energy when swung. But its sole ability is enough. She merely needs to pull unused magical energy from the next cavern after she uses up the energy in this one. She can move on to the next one after that. Then next after that, next after that, you get that, yeah. There's no end to the parallel worlds. The possibility of opposite mirrors are infinite, therefore limitless. Even if Ren's capacity is only a thousand, it doesn't matter. An inexhaustible supply and an infinite supply. Because the powers of the magical circuits are equal, the two magi are equal. That was, oh God, so unnecessary. Speaking of unnecessary, we're about to get to that point. Another rumbling echoes through the space. Ren, Ren's gem sword not only destroys the shadows, it its excessive force slowly brings the cavern towards its collapse. When that happens, the altar in the Great Holy Grail will be destroyed as well. Mato Sakura will lose if she continues fighting. Even if she attacks until Tosca Ren tries or tires, the room will cave in shortly thereafter. The shadows stop. She must finally understand the origin of her enemy's power. Gasping for breath, Sakura glares at her older sister. No matter how many times you try, the result will be the same. That's all that your power can manage. Have you cooled your head now? Don't be ridiculous. This is unfair. Why, Nissan? Why are you always the one? The battle continues. Malto Sakura keeps screaming even though she knows it's useless and that she's pushing herself into a corner. Along with the grudge she kept inside for a long, long time. That's right. I was jealous of you. You stayed at the Tosca, Tosca's house and were always brilliant. I hate you for never knowing any trouble. That's why I want to win. I wanted you to praise me just once. Why can't you let me have a little thing like that? Fair. Okay, well, it's a little hard to say that she, uh, that she never knew any trouble, but... I mean, the rest of it was pretty on point. The older sister slash the older sister slashes away the oncoming shadow, gritting her teeth. She catches a glimpse of her sister's mind. Why? It was different for me. We were sisters. We were born to the same family, but I had nothing. I was trapped in the room with the worms and was treated as an object. I never led a human life, and nobody said anything kind to me. The hatred. The hatred is not directed at her older sister, but... I almost died every day. I always looked at myself in the mirror wanting to die, but I was scared of dying and I didn't want to disappear myself. Because I heard that I had an older sister. I'm a child of the Tosca family, so I always believed that my older sister would come save me. Kinda weird she actually never did. Weirdly. 
Because I don't think Ren ever tried to keep up the family ties with Zok with uh, Zokin or um, or the Einsburns. So there was really no excuse for her not to go and help her sister after her parents died. Spoilers. They was like she constantly watched her sister. She had, and she was clearly aware of how bad the Zokins were. So there's really no excuse for why she actually didn't. And as we'll see here in a second, she does actually care about Sakura. I mean, we knew that she's been watching her and taking care of, not really taking care of her, but still being like, there shadowing her, basically. That's something we saw in Unlimited Blade Works. And she clearly had like resentment towards Shiro's response in Unlimited Blade Works about like being adopted by another family, but I digress. But you never came. You just kept smiling, having no idea. You took no notice of the miserable girl and have lived happy in the Tosca household. Why? We're sisters and we're both humans, so how come you're the only one smiling like that? Her hatred isn't directed at her older sister. Uh... Excuse me? I'm pretty sure it is. It's a blind plea to herself and the world. I quit being human. Of course, I haven't been treated like one for a long time. My eyes and hair were changed and every cell in my body was changed so I could become the Magus of Makiri. Eleven years. Eleven years, Nissan! The Makiri didn't train me. They didn't expect anything from my intelligence. They taught my body and made me into a mere tool that uses magic. They'd laugh that I'd become a better tool the more pain they gave me. They started putting poison in my food, so even eating became a terrifying agony. Once they put me with the worms, I had to ask for grandfather's permission even to breathe! She's crying, but Ren slashes away the shadows without a word. I know I'm crazy, but it hurts, and the more I begged them to stop, the more delighted they became, and the more they tampered with my body. So I'm not smart like you. It's not like I can do everything like you. All I can do is take my pain out on others. Her oppressed soul. Her, irrepar her irreparable body. And... But is that my fault? The ones who made me like this are grandfather and my father that sold me to the Malto family, and Nissan who didn't come save me. I didn't become this monster because I wanted to. I was forced to become one because everyone cornered me. But... What of it? I'm gonna wait until I see how this plays out before I start going into a tirade. She doesn't feel for her at all. Of course not. Friends, an emotionless machine. Not a single word of sympathy. <laughs> Things like that happen. It's not like crying will change anything. And besides, being a monster doesn't sound so bad. It doesn't hurt now, right? Cruel approval. The girls' cries did go a bit too far, but they were just asking for warmth. Barin denied it. She says it's right to be a monster, saying it's because she was weak. Her always perfect sister tells her the hard truth. It's all because you're like that. The shadows boil up. The girl, who only seconds ago was about to abandon the fight under pressure from her sister, gives form to her curse and her despair. 
I see. Then let me tell you something. I never thought it was painful. I could turn aside most problems and there was nothing I couldn't do. So I've never been cornered like you, and I was never interested in what the cornered people thought. That's how I am. I don't understand people, other people's pain. To be honest, I don't know how much pain you've suffered or what cruel treatment you've received. I'm sorry, but I'm not even going to try to understand. Bitch, she just fucking told you. What do you mean you don't under- God. Concise words. She's not lying. She just tells her younger sister the truth. But Sakura, even as intense it, intensitive, intense, intense, insensitive, I'm stupid, as I am, I never thought I was blessed. She looks straight at her. She stares back at Malto Sakura with all emotion contained in her words. <sighs> she cannot understand. What did <laughs> just say? I wasn't blessed either. What? Hadred dyes her brain red. She must be fooling around, saying such convenient things now. Shut up. Now you tell me you weren't blessed? She's about to lose her mind. She's about to break down. Her sister has never looked at her. She showed off her great talent and happiness. Shut up. How can you say that? She never liked or hated me, who wanted everything from her but received nothing, and says she's still pure and clean? Shut up, Nissan. I won't forgive you. That's not good enough. I don't want to hear such things. I'm not going to listen to your excuses, Nissan. I... Don't need you anymore. The girl screams as if denying her inner darkness. That's the last resistance Tosca Rin could manage. She makes the decision she's been postponing. She wanted to wait for Emi Ashiro as long as she could, but she can't postpone it any longer. No. First of all, it was a mistake to entrust Shiro with their problem. Tosuka Ren's weakness against Mounto Sakura. Sakura. <laughs> Ren calls out to her calmly as if saying hello. At that instant, Tosuka Ren finishes the battle. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to leave it a like. And if you want to see more of my future content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And to stay up to date with all of the releases that come out daily, be sure to click that bell. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, why not check out my Patreon page? Link is down in the description. And as always, until the next video, hasta.